Avant de commencer avec M. Charles Thériault et euh, également euh, Matthew Viano, j'aimerais savoir exactement ce que, de quoi on parle ici. Parce que là, il parle de Roundup, il parle de Vision Max, il parle également de glyphosate. Et puis euh, là-dessus, on invite un, un docteur, c'est le docteur David Coombs, qui est spécialisé dans la biologie moléculaire. moléculaire. Il est un ancien professeur euh, à la retraite de l'Université du Nouveau-Brunswick dans le domaine. Je lui dis bonjour. Hello, Mr. David Coombs. How are you? Oh, I got the wrong. Oh, bon. Fallait que je parle de monsieur, mais je peux, monsieur Coombs. Je, je le réessaye, vous allez voir. Des petits problèmes techniques, ça arrive tout le temps. Euh, et voilà, vous allez voir, il va répondre. David Coombs qui va nous expliquer exactement qu'est-ce que le, le Roundup ou le Vision Max euh, fait à euh, aux plantes, aux animaux, puis s'il y a vraiment un lien, à son avis, euh, sur le cancer et euh, aussi sur euh, l'épandage de glyphosate. Mr. Coombs, are, are you there? Dr. Coombs? I'm here, yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, Mr. David Coombs, uh, what, what exactly is Roundup? Roundup is a, is a chemical formulation of, a, of an herbicide. The main ingredient is called glyphosate. It stands for glycine and phosphate, so glyphosate. And it is combined with many other chemicals to make it penetrate plants so that it can act on the plant uh, biosynthesis. So why do we use Roundup? Roundup was introduced in the 1970s uh, because it has... A, uh, it affects a pathway in plants that, and in microbes, in bacteria, that does not exist in humans. So it's called the shikimate pathway, and it is responsible in plants and in microbes for the synthesis of three very important amino acids that we must have in our diet. Humans don't make these, and animals generally do not make these three amino acids. So we rely on plants and microbes to make them for us. And so the idea was to inhibit the enzyme in plants that makes these amino acids to kill the plants. And so it was used as a general herbicide. It would kill any plant at all because all plants have the same pathway. And uh, later on, uh, Monsanto invented a way of, uh, they found a gene in a, in a bacterium that was resistant to it, this chemical, the glyphosate chemical. And so they were able to genetically alter plants, and many, many uh, crops now are, are altered this way. It's called GMO, genetically modified organisms. And so they can grow these, these GMOs in the presence of glyphosate and Roundup without killing them because they're resistant, and all the other weeds and so forth are supposed to die. That's essentially why we use uh, Roundup in the forests and in the, and in the fields, in the agricultural fields. Donc, pour expliquer un petit peu ce que, ce que M. Combs, euh, Dr. Combs vient de mentionner, c'est que le, le, le Roundup est utilisé pour tuer certaines plantes, mais il y a d'autres plantes qui sont résistantes au Roundup. Et, et, so, so, the plants that, that are resistant to Roundup, are they the plants that we, uh, the, the human plant? That's what it is? Like, uh, the I mean, ones that we eat, yeah, the, the plants, the, the uh, corn, Soybeans, alfalfa, all kinds of plants that are now genetically altered to be resistant to the active chemical, so they can grow in the presence of glyphosate. So, so why? So, Roundup and Vision Max, two the same same products? Yes. Yeah. Well, they're all this, basically the, the, since the patent expired many years ago. Now, about ten years ago, uh, many other people have become manufacturers of glyphosate, and they have their own trade name. So, Monsanto's trade name is Roundup. But any, you know, Vision Max is another trade name from another company. I think it's from Bayer. So what happens when we spray Roundup or Vision Max on a forest? It kills everything. There are no plants in the forest that are resistant to it. So basically it's used as a way of, of killing all the plants and say uh, undesirable species in a clear cut uh, or in the areas underneath uh, power lines where NB Power sprays ex excessively. Uh, they, they spray just about everything in the, you know, the, the little cracks in the dams up in, and on all the St. John River dams. And uh, they, they basically use it everywhere they want to kill plants. It's just generally used as, a, as an herbicide. And it's excessively used. It's, it's, a, it's a contaminant in soil and in water. Uh, and, of course, in the air when they're spraying because it does drift very badly. So is Roundup and Vision Max uh, 
good for human beings or bad? Well, human health, uh, this is one of the, the big things. The idea was that because it doesn't affect the synthesis of amino acids in humans because we don't make these amino acids, we have to use plant and, and microbial uh, sources in our diet. So corn and stuff and soybeans will have these three amino acids when we, when we eat them. So there was, it was thought to be kind of a silver bullet where there was no effect on humans because we don't have the enzyme that this chemical inhibits. Which at first view, the way you explain it, yeah, okay, so it doesn't do nothing to humans. Right. And then the problem was, uh, it, it, what's well, funny, because when you think about uh, drinking a chemical which is supposed to be harmless, and you die within hours, this is what happens. If people take the pesticide and they drink a gallon, you know, a glass of it, they would be dead within hours, and it would be a very agonizing death. It tells you that there are other things that this chemical does to cells, human cells, and that's the part that's the part that everybody is sort of uh, forgetting about. There's been such a kind of a love affair because it does kill plants very efficiently that nobody really cared about what the what the effects on human cells were. Now, of course, it has to go through extensive, extensive testing to be approved by the EPA and the Canadian EPA and the world's uh, EPAs everywhere in every country. And in the beginning, uh, Monsanto was required to do all these tests, and they showed very low toxicity in animals. So you can feed an animal uh, thousands of, kilo of milligrams of, per kilogram of body weight, and it, that's, you know, finally it will kill the animal. LD50 is the concentration people talk about. So it will kill the animal. Absolutely. Well, yeah. I mean, in doses where you would have to, literally, it's the same thing as I just said about you drink the, the stuff straight. If you fed it to an animal at high levels, there's no animal that can survive it. But the point is that it's a very, very large amount of, of pesticide that is required to kill an animal. And so they thought, well, this is great because that means it's not toxic. And it really, the chemical itself, in the short term and in you know in long term studies uh, has has proven to be pretty low low toxicity. The problem is then that you have to look at other effects and and I think when it, this has been around since the seventies and uh, it was approved early and it became very popular when roundup ready plants were 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 G, gmo uh, were made so it's gotten to the point now where it is the world's largest uh, used herbicide. There's nothing comes close to it. Okay. And so it has a very large user base, and a lot of people are making a lot of money on it. And, uh, of course, farmers love it because it does kill all these, these weeds that they have, to, they have to control one way or another. And so the, the research that was needed to prove that it was perfectly safe for all animals and plants, uh, animals and, and uh, humans in place and stuff... What has been ongoing, there's been many, many research papers, hundreds of research papers published on what this chemical does to, uh, to animal and animal cells and human cells. And, and the one thing that I was struck by when I gave this little talk to the Council of Canadians a week ago was there's an assay called the Comet assay, which looks at breaks in our DNA on our chromosomes. And this chemical causes those breaks, this glyphosate chemical causes breaks in DNA. And when you look into what causes cancer, cancer is caused in, in some part, not all parts, of course. Mutation is the biggest method of causing cancer where you change the, the DNA sequence. But when you put breaks in DNA, in, the, in your chromosomes, they tend to fall apart eventually and rearrange themselves so that chromosome 21 is now hooked up to chromosome 17 in some funny way. And when you have these translocations, that means that there can be genes that should be quiet. They're promoting growth, uh, and they should be quiet when, when there's no growth needed. And they get turned on radically high. So you, ba you basically say, grow, grow, grow. And that's what cancer is. Cancer is essentially uncontrolled growth of cells. So these so DNA breaks haven't been shown to directly cause cancer yet, but when you have a, any chemical that breaks DNA, you are asking for cancer. And there's so many other um, uh, ill effects that people have now found that uh, are showing up at very low levels. And 
the funny thing for me, the, the thing that is guiding my, my obsession with this chemical is that there's a thing called the precautionary principle. In French, it's called principe de précaution. I think that's how you'd say it. Yeah, principe de précaution. And basically what it means is that when there's any question about the toxicity, for instance, of a chemical you're using widely, that the precautionary principle would say you should not use it. You should take the precaution of if there's any indication of possible harm, you should not be using this stuff. And that, can, that principle was, was pretty well gutted by the, the Harper administration uh, for all those years that they were in power. And so all these chemicals have gone through that process of being approved without really uh, um, being uh, uh, looked at through the precautionary principle. Okay. So I think right now, if we were to look back at all the research that's been done recently and places like California, uh, Quebec, uh, many places in the world are looking at banning this chemical because it is so so widely used. It's in all our food. Every People, people who have never eaten um, uh, vegetables that were contaminated with this stuff, it is, it, it's in all the vegetables we eat. Um, people who eat organic chemicals have this residue in their blood. The, the glyphosate residue is in their blood. So it's, it's gotten to the point where it's so it's hundreds of millions of tons are made annually and used annually in, in the world. And it's getting to the point where there's so much of it around that you can't avoid it. And it has many effects. I, I don't have the time to go into them here, but just, the idea just... is that it, that it has a lot of toxic effects on humans and on animals, of course, and on things like the environment, like in the forest, it would be uh, the, the fish and the amphibians, the frogs, all these and insects, the monarch butterfly has been pretty well destroyed by this chemical. Uh, so it's something that, that desperately needs to be looked at. And I think your, your listeners will appreciate that there's a lot of people in, in the province who are concerned about the deer population dropping radically and, and that the forests are being sprayed indiscriminately um, as we have given up our land to, to these large corporations to do whatever they want with. Um, I, think it's a, I think it's a tragedy, and I think it's very dangerous. I think we should be looking seriously at some sort of a, a precautionary ban until we prove that this stuff is safe, which I'm sure it's not, actually. Le docteur David Combs, qui est un biologiste moléculaire à la retraite avec l'Université du Nouveau-Brunswick, un professeur mentionnait, entre autres, que, à son avis, le glyphosate brise, à un certain moment donné, pourrait briser l'ADN, encourager la croissance de, de certaines maladies, dont a mentionné euh, le, le cancer. Euh, docteur Combs a aussi euh, mentionné qu'il conseillait, recommandait fortement euh, l'arrêt de l'usage du du euh, Roundup ou glyphosate ou Vision Max, comme on, on peut le connaître aussi, euh, jusqu'à ce qu'on soit en mesure de prouver que non, euh, il n'y a aucun danger pour la santé animale, également pour la santé euh, humaine, euh, quand on fait l'épandage euh, d'herbicides tels que le glyphosate sur les provinces, sur, sur les, les forêts de la province. Uh, Dr. David Coombs, thank you very much for that explanation. It gives, gives us a better idea of, of, of what the product is. Sure, thank you.